just two weeks behind Knox Johnson, he continued eastwards for another lap of the Southern Ocean to save my soul, as he put it. This is the real solo race, sailing like it's 1968. Forcément, tous les gens qui reviendront de Golden Globe forcément, il faut s'attendre à ce qu'ils aient changé. It's a great story and it's the 50th anniversary and it's a great opportunity to relive the original solo sailing when technology wasn't available, where we're just using sextants and uh, wind-up clocks to find your position. And it's really the story of humanity and human endeavour in the extreme. So the world has never seen anything like this event. Well, hey everybody, this is number seven of our 2022 DGR entrance. Uh, we've got Ian Herbert Jones in a minute. And uh, just remember, if you want to ask questions, you can just put it in as a comment and uh, say good day. And uh, you can grill Ian, not me, and we'll see how we go. A few things happening this week. In fact, I'll get Ian up right now so uh, we can discuss the uh, all the different beats and pieces. You should pop up right now. G'day, Ian. Hello. How are you doing? How are you? <laughs> you can hear me? Yeah, I'm yeah, good. And you? Good. Yeah, so, pretty good. So where yeah, are you? Good. Hang it in. We might, have a, we might have a delay. Where are you now? So I'm in Shropshire in the centre of the UK, right in the middle of England. Shropshire. Shropshire. <laughs> where that Shropshire. Name from? Yeah, yeah. But as okay. far away from the city as you can get in the UK. All right. I'm in Hobart, of course, still here, although we're going to move to Adelaide soon on the the middle of next month, we move to Adelaide. We've got some things happening there. So uh, I'll be closer to, to uh, Captain Coconut. That'll be a worry. <laughs> anyway, um, so this week, some gossip, things going on. Uh, Gurav is uh, about to launch his boat or has already just launched his boat. So that's kind of cool. He'll be excited about sailing. Um, Michael Davey is also moving his boat about... Uh, half a kilometre or something, he's got to move the boat. So uh, um, he's uh, carrying on in New Zealand. Um, and Michael Gug, okay, he's uh, Guggenheim. I call him Michael Guggenheim. Uh, for, and uh, he's actually got hold of his new boat, which was Antoine Cousseau's boat from previous race. So he's finally on board in the Saab de Lone in France and he'll be sailing shortly. So that's kind of cool. Michael Date. Uh, is uh, either has launched his boat today or he's about to tomorrow or something. So he's finished his sort of main part of his refit. He sent me a message uh, yesterday or the day before, uh, chafing at the bit to go sailing now, so that's cool. And Erton is on his way to the Azores. He finally cracked it out of the out of the med. And I uh, know oh, he didn't get into the med, but he's he's uh, on his boat on his way to the Azores. So he's I can hear him screaming from here for joy. You know he's he's quite happy to be back on the water so that's cool and so what are you, what's happening with you and your boat so we're uh we're still locked effectively still locked down uh don so my boat's in wales and in the uk yeah. england is beginning to open up but wales is a few weeks behind so yeah i i haven't been near the boat for whatever 12 weeks now um yeah however local boat builders can get to the boat at the moment so the plan is even though we didn't finish the refit work we wanted to do, we're going to launch her hopefully this week. And then, fingers crossed, Wales will open up to visitors around the 6th of July. Okay. So I'm going to put her in the water. Too much information. Finish off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, it's good. That's, what do. That's what you want to do. You want to get out and get on your boat. And for those that don't yeah. know, I think most people know that you've got Isfan's boat, Tradewind 35, fantastic boat, uh -huh. uh, really cool. So, um so that's kind of good. Um, okay, so we've got to go right back to the beginning. That's what I was trying to get you off before we get too far into where you are now. So where did you start sailing? Why and how? Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm a late starter. So I have no family sailing background whatsoever. Um, but I joined the Army at 17. And, and while I was in the Army, I was how introduced to sailing. Army? How long uh, in the About Army seven for? years. 
and what were you doing? What division? What section? So I was in the uh, what's known as the REMI, Royal Electrical and Mechanical Engineers. So I was an aircraft engineer or an avionics oh, engineer, actually. Okay. Oh, that'll do you well. That'll yeah. do you well. Yeah. <laughs> GGR, plenty of electricals, so that's cool. And so so you started sailing. How? What were you sailing into? What you introduced by them in their sailing program? Yeah. I mean, the Army do loads of sailing. They use it as adventure training. And so a good friend yeah. of mine, uh, Chris Late, who I was in the Army with, who who uh, actually came when I when I bought Puffin from his fan. He was with me in Saab the Lone, Chris. So we go back since we were 17. He introduced me to sailing in the Army. And then it was, um, as I say, it was adventure training. So the idea was it wasn't a cruise. You weren't there to be comfortable. It was about being, at, you know, it was used for training purposes. So, so what, what was the boat and where would you go? Oh, there was also, so Nick's, Nicholson's, Nick 55's. Halberg oh, Rassies. Yeah. We had a we had a whole we had a fleet of Halberg Rassies back in the day. Where'd you um, go? Where'd you go? It's all around the um, south coast of the UK mainly, but also uh, yeah. Kiel up in the Baltic and so on. But mainly south coast UK, France, Channel Islands, that type of sailing, really. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so married kids. What's the story? Yeah. Whole nine yards. So married to Sally. My, yeah. my number one sponsor for the event. I got three kids: Thomas, Owen, and Emma. Twins who are now nineteen, and Emma's okay. fourteen. So, all still at home. <laughs> so, what do they think? What do they think about you and the GGR? Ah, uh, it's interesting. It's kind of what Dad does. So, I've been talking about this stuff for so long that yeah. it's just not much of a surprise, really. Yeah. Um, Sally's Sally's the best, right? Sally Sally says, "Don't talk to me about it." Make it an option, choose to do it, and then get on with it. But you know, I don't want to hear about it every night. Of the week. <laughs> so, oh, that's cool. So I can't, oh, can't that's better than that. Yeah, that, that that sounds about right. So, what what transitioned you from uh, adventure sailing into the idea of doing the GGR? When did the, when did that whole thing start? Okay, I Don, I I've got to believe like most of the competitors. That there's something going on in the back of your mind for many years before the GGR ever came around. That whole yeah. idea, you know, the call it what you like, you know, a dream of that yeah. type of voyage. This is not tropical island voyaging. It was the extreme voyage and the idea of solo. I'd read all the books and so on. You, When you put this out in 2015, I emailed you. I heard about it. Somebody said to me, right. you'll like this, Ian. Take a look at this. I'm sure it's 2015. I dropped you an email. You said, "Yeah, you're on. <laughs> if you want to do this." Yeah. But it was a uh, just the wrong time. You know, life, money, jobs. I just the enormity of it was yeah. too much at that, at that moment. Um, I'd done a clipper race previously, a few years before, so yeah. I knew just enough to be dangerous. If that makes sense. <laughs> this is your. I just put a photo of your clipper boat up. What? How far did you go? What? What? And what were you doing then? So that's Clipper Singapore. That's 2008. Uh, I did the whole thing. I did the circumnavigation with Clipper. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was my first real offshore adventure, to be quite frank. And, so what, and what was that like? What was that like? Just amazing. Like it's got to be life changing, right? You, I mean, it's, yeah. it's a cliche, but it's a fact as well. Um, it becomes. It's not a trip anymore. It's a way of life. Yeah. So for, you know, 10 months of my life, that's what, and the prep beforehand, so 12 months of my life, that's what I was doing. Um, I was living out in, in the Far East at the time when I came across the Clipper. I knew Robin, right, from the books. I knew about Robin. I knew about <laughs> Shea Bly and all these guys. So, yeah, yeah. And again, Sally did the same thing. She said, don't talk to me about it. Do it or don't do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, get on with it. So, I'm looking forward to meeting Sally. I'm sure I will. <laughs> Very clear. <laughs> yeah. So, what's worst? That was worst, amazing. Trip. Yeah, worst and best on the Clipper deal. What was the two two moments? You know, worst and best. Well, there's two two things on a big crew boat. The best thing is the crew, and the, sometimes the worst thing is the crew. Right. So okay. this is where solo sailing comes from. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. You, know, you okay. want to be without them. You, you, sometimes you don't want to be with them. It's a long time at sea with with uh, a group of people. Yeah. Um, Clipper was just amazing. South Africa, coming around the coast of South yeah, Africa, yeah. was stunning. I right, um, think, think about it all the time. It's a great opportunity. I mean, it's, it, it costs money, but life costs money, and if you can do it, yeah. wow, it's a it's a big yeah. deal, you know. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I was um, I was like watch leader. And this was before they had sort of a second a mate on board. Yeah, yeah. So there's two, two watch leaders, and I ended up being watch leader for for the whole journey, basically. Yeah, and I don't suppose I realised it at the time, but it you know it definitely planted a very firm seed. Yeah. Um, but once you come back from that, and you go back to work. And yeah. you, you go back. You got to pay for it. Got the families growing up. Time moves on. You're back to yeah. weekend feeling again, right? Um, yeah. So you, so you're really you're going into this with a with a bit of interesting per perspective. You've already been round in a bigger boat, and you know what the weather does, and you know what's involved. Mm -hmm. So I can anticipate that you a that gives you the confidence, but it must make you really antsy to get out out there and do it. Eh? You must be really excited about doing it because you know yeah. what it, it what it yeah. means. Yeah. So yeah, super excited, and and, it's, and not just, but getting out there on my boat, on puffing, yeah, because it's time on the water in your platform. You can become really expert on a big seventy foot boat, and then you jump yeah. on another boat, single handed, and, and it's, you know it's, it's a new learning experience, right? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so you you sent me some pictures. <laughs> this is rather poignant. <laughs> this is the pedestal, and those of you that followed the um, yeah. followed the GGR last time, poor. Istvan, you know, Istvan, what, what's the deal there? What's the story? So, uh, I mean, Istvan did an amazing job on, on, on the boat and going around uh, and his uh, Golden Globe race was just phenomenal. He's unstoppable, right? Istvan is not a man yeah. to be stopped easily. Absolutely yeah. unstoppable. So yeah. his big challenge was steering and the way that the with the wind vane interacted with the steering and so on. So when yeah. I picked the boat up from Saab de Lyon, of course, the steering was basically knackered, as we'd say. So I did a yeah. temporary fix to get us home, and, and uh, first part of the refit was to rebuild the steering. So she's, she's <laughs> perfect. <again. laughs> okay. And so, so uh, and, you, and you heard what he's up to now, don't, haven't you? Have you heard that? I don't think it's Amazing. got a secret. Yeah. Yeah. He, yep. he, for those that haven't heard yet, and I don't think I'm let it. You know, I mean, that's pretty much public knowledge. He bought the boat back, his original boat that he did his solo circumnavigation in 1990. That's when I bumped into him. I was going around Cape Horn in the BOC Challenge in my 50-footer with one of the first military GPSs and all that stuff, yeah. and I hear this guy come up on the radio saying, well, you know, <laughs> where are he was on a sextant and had an aside for about seven days, you know, and uh, uh, and I hear about this little guy going around this little boat, da 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 And so, anyway, he does the GGR, and I really think he wants to race against himself now. So he bought that boat back again. It's a 34-footer. Yeah. And he's prepping it to go do another solo non-stop in that, which will be quite interesting, eh? <laughs> There's a nice little story so, on uh, on Puffin. The uh, the compass, the binnacle compass on Puffin, had come yeah. from Isfan's previous boat. So it'd been around the world, right, been okay. around the world a second time. And of course, he sold me the boat yeah. and everything on it, as was. Yeah. And he and he left yeah. me a little note, and he, hopefully, hopefully, his fans watching. And he said, "Well, you know, maybe, maybe one day, if I, I could buy you a new compass and so on." And I, <laughs> and it, it hadn't settled in. I thought, "Oh, crikey, this compass has been around the world twice with it, with this fan." Yeah. So anyway, we took the compass off, we cleaned it up, and we shipped it to Hungary for him. So, uh, so he originally yeah, yeah, yeah. go back yeah, to the yeah. boat. Okay, and you, you've, you've solved another problem by the look of it. You got a new wind vane. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. So hydrovane. Yeah. Hydrovane was the only wind vane that I, I was familiar with. So I'm not trying to be clever. It's the only one I knew anything about. So, uh, you so that's the new one. You had, you had one previously on your other boat, didn't you? Yeah, yeah I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, uh, been, just for a really bit of funny, funny side story here, your other boat that you sold to get Puffin was a seriously good boat. It would have gone yeah. anywhere, anytime. You know, it was well kitted, you know, so... <laughs> And it's and it's still for sale. Actually, we took it off the market. I've been using it as a floating hotel during the refit and so on. But uh, as you say, I first first GGR race, I decided I couldn't do it. So I spent time bought a boat, set the boat up for single handed or short handed adventure sailing. Yeah. And then the second GGR came around. I went ah hell, I'm going to sell this and go for it. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, it happens, eh? So um, so what do you think you're uh, – what, what's the most frustrating thing about the GGR at the moment? Uh, just getting ready to go sailing at the moment, right? Same as everybody. I think. Yeah. yeah. What's, yeah. The, what's the best yeah. part then? What's the best part? You know, like the exciting I part. The I love the prep. I could do boat – you know, get organising the boat prep and stuff. I'd like to spend more time doing it myself. But I enjoy yeah. that whole process, thinking about it, planning it. I've been learning Celestial, yeah. Don, right? 
Okay. So I, yeah. I've been teaching myself celestial, so that's been fantastic. Look, I'm going I'm to drop a bombshell here because it's really funny, you know, how different people have a different perspective on the GGR. Captain yeah. Coconut didn't get all the way around last time, right? He pulled, pulled, pulled into Adelaide and that was it. It was all over. He's entered again, as everyone knows. He's doing a GGR. He's going to get his boat organised and, uh, uh, you know, he'll leave in another year or so to sail around to the to the start in La Sable yeah. alone. And we were chatting the other day and he <laughs> and he said something along the lines of, oh, yeah, I'll do the 22, but just leave a spot for me for the 26 and maybe I'll do the 30 as well. Because yeah. I've got to tell you, he's an interesting guy. I really like Mark. But he loves all the other stuff around the sailing and stuff. He's a great sailor. He'll just sail up to the start and he'll go around again and da -da -da, watch this space. I mean, anything can happen. But he, he's one that just loves all that other stuff, preparing the boat, the, the the lead up to the start, the people, all that sort of thing, that whole family deal. You know, GGR family loves it. So uh, anyway, I, I digress. Um, word moment. Give me the first thing that pops to your head when I tell you tell you um, pandemic. Pain, pain in the ass. <laughs> Money. Uh, not enough. <laughs> Brexit. Uh, wish we hadn't. <laughs> Overboard. Uh, don't. <laughs> Rump steak. Yes, please. Yep. <laughs> Albatross. Beautiful. Father. Uh, dad. <laughs> <laughs> A winner. <laughs> yes, that'll be me. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Family. Everything. Books. Oh, too many. Uh, not enough time. Yeah. Impossible. <laughs> no. Green. Yeah, GGR. GPS. <laughs> Not allowed, apparently. Ho holidays. Um, GGR. <laughs> Fear. Uh, management. Broken mast. Uh, to be avoided. <laughs> okay. That's pretty, uh, very, very astute. So I don't know whether that was your military or your electronics uh, background coming into those answers. They were very appropriate. So um, <laughs> anyway, um, okay, here comes the fun part now. I hope you get some good numbers. Pick a number between one and ten. Ten. What thing good, what thing, oh, what thing could you not live without? What thing could I not live without? My toothbrush. <laughs> toothbrush. Boy. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, 10 to 20. 20. What are the three most important things in your life and why? Oh, darn. So family, which is, which is like, you know, about all of them. So that's a big one. Uh, family, um, health, and, and happiness, right? Okay. Right. Maybe. <laughs> 20, 20 to 30. 30. Cheap. It's funny how people pick numbers. Eh? Describe yourself in three words. Um, stubborn, optimistic, uh, friendly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right, 30 to 40. 40. Uh, 40. The pattern. <laughs> how do you deal with stress? Uh, bring it on. To be honest, I'm pretty good with stress. Um, my business life is always stressful. So sh st st use use stress to drive yourself forward. Use it. Use it. Turn it into a positive energy. Yeah, it's can. an interesting subject. Though. I have people telling me all the time, so, oh, how are you feeling? You're stressed out, this, that. And I never, I, basically, in my own mind, I virtually yeah. never get stressed because there's good stress and there's bad stress. If you're passionate about something, Stress is an okay, it's a cool thing. It just means you've got a lot to do. You better get on with it, you know. And so yeah, it's it. the same. I mean, I never, anyway, who knows? <laughs> okay. Uh, where have we got 40 to 47? 47. What's the most courageous thing you've ever done? Um, getting married, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm looking forward to meeting Sally. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Why? Why was that courageous? Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a late starter, so it took me a while to make my mind up. 
So, uh, and, and then it took me a long time to get the confidence, uh, the bravado up, let's put it that way. <laughs> I'm starting to detect the backstory there. <laughs> I think there's more to this story. All right, that'll there be is. for later. Um, okay, pick a letter between A and K. A. A. Oh, jeepers, everyone does this. Is a hot dog a sandwich? A hot dog is a sandwich, yeah. It is? Okay. I'm going to give you another letter. I'm going to give you a double trick. Pick another letter between A and K. Uh, any letter? Um, uh, K. K. If you compared yourself to an animal, what would it be? <laughs> I'm probably um, – it should be a marine animal, right, if I'm going to compare myself to oh, an you animal. Can pick how whatever about, you want. You could be a monkey or a about, snail. How about, or a how about an albatross? How about an albatross? And that's boring. Oh, really? It's jeepers. That's like picking a dolphin. I would have said a dolphin because they're a lot of fun. But anyway, that's cool. All right, so I'm going to, I'm going to uh, bring um, Matthew in here right now and see if this works. So, Matthew, hopefully you'll pop up on the screen right now. Hello. We all need to adjust our position now. Otherwise, we get half heads. That's it. You got it? Oh, I've got to explain. Jane didn't get to do the washing this week, so neither did I. <laughs> I've got an OGR shirt on. But anyway, hi, Matthew. Uh-uh. I'm not hearing uh, you. Matthew. I can't see Matthew, John, at my end. Ah, jeepers. We, the three of us were having a big chat yeah. before we got here, and now Matthew's gone quiet. Um, what are you getting, Jack? You can't see anybody. You can't see Matthew. I'm looking at you, Matthew. Yeah, I've got it on the screen. What's here we this? Go. Right oh, you just popped up now. Speak, Matthew. Hi, Don. Hi, Ian. How are you? Oh, hey, yeah, Matthew. the volume turned down. That's it. <laughs> well, good to see you. I, I got to have a laugh about Adelaide. I got to. I forget the names. So in Australia, we've got a lot of Australian entrants, right? We've got Matthew Wright. Hang on, I got to get my thing. We've got. Matthew Wright, we've got uh, Michael Date, we've got Michael Davey, we've got Mike Smith, we've got uh, Mark Sinclair, and who have I forgotten? Um, there's one more there. Is that uh, right? There's yeah. another Australian. They're all Mike's or Matthew's or bloody da da da. But anyway, good to, good to chat. Um, you've met uh, Ian before. So what's up with you? Where are you now, Matthew, and uh, where's your boat and all that sort of stuff? Uh, so look, I'm. Uh... You know, I'm in the emerging world centre of uh, long-distance single-handed sailors, which is Adelaide, of course, Don. Yeah. Uh, with three gold <laughs> uh, entrance oh, for the next race. Actually, uh, course, yeah. you're right. Hang on, I just I forgot to mention that. Yeah, Adelaide has Matthew, has um, Michael. Uh, hang on, I got to. Yeah, we got no, we got Matthew right. We got Michael Davey. We got Mark Sinclair, and that's it. Out of Adelaide, yeah. And it sounds like soon we get John McIntyre again. Oh, no, I don't know about that. But anyway, that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so you've got another bloody rustler. It's always interesting. Yeah. We've always got these things. There's always someone with a rustler around at Tradewind 35. Mm -hmm. So why do you think that you're going to uh, beat uh, Ian in your rustler? Uh, look, actually, I don't, I don't know the Tradewind 35 that well. Um, you know, although I did, uh, uh, you know, Kevin's in the last race looked pretty good. Yeah. Um, but I uh, look at the boats I looked at in Europe uh, and the Rustler 36 is in Europe. It's in France um, at the moment. I bought it in the UK in Falmouth. Yeah. Uh, sailed, it, sailed it across in uh, the start of March. Hang on. Don't tell it too much. Don't tell us too much. We've got nothing to talk about yeah. next week. But why are you going to beat him? Come on. Well, we want to get to the nitty gritty. <laughs> I think that, it, look, they performed, they performed very well in the last race. And I think of the boats I looked at, it was the boat that I, I clearly liked the best. Um, and I thought that was a good starting point, basically. Yeah, actually, you surprised me. I remember we were talking about boats for quite a while. You know, you were asking me things and you had a couple to look at in England. And then all of a sudden, mm. without saying anything, a month later, you said, and a rustler was never on the agenda. Hmm. All of a sudden, you sent me a message. That I got a rustler. <laughs> I thought, oh no! <laughs> and it, so that was pretty cool. It's just the just the way it turned out. Really, I, I hadn't gone there to look at look at a rustler thirty six at all, but I ended yeah. up sort of coming across this and uh, and it, look at you know I, I'm happy with it. Okay, so Ian, apart from tying a bucket to uh, Matthew's keel, how are you going to beat him? 
Well, Don, it doesn't matter what boat you've got. You've still got to put it in the right bit of the ocean at the right time, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to worry about one day at a time. So, <laughs> Yeah, but this Adelaide sailors are pretty good, though. I've got to tell you. you know, like oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They all tend to stop in Adelaide on the way past, though, right? Because <laughs> Adelaide's such a cool place, you know. It's very hard to sail past. But anyway. Yeah, yeah. That, Can't that, argue with that. <laughs> that's another story. Uh, Jane's waving at me. I think is there someone after – I'd better check the – Questions here. Maybe someone's got a question for you. Um, is someone there? Nope. Oh, yeah. Okay. Guru, I want to know, but you got the answer. Okay. So that's kind of cool. And um, um, okay. So, what, Ian, is your uh, biggest fear about the GGR, as in you know, doing it? Forget the getting to the start line, underway. Yeah. You're underway. What's your biggest fear about going around? I think it's, um, you, you know, Everyone, when we're honest with ourselves, we know how enormous this is, that you can't take any of it lightly. And I suppose the biggest fear is finding yourself out of out of your depth, right? In a in a scenario. I remember, I remember listening to Gregor talking about, you know, his cap size. So yeah, yeah I, I do I worry about it? No. Do when I think about planning, do I do I try and think how can I plan around it? That so that's the biggest fear, being out of control. And um, you know, there's no pause button. Don, you know yeah. that. Yeah, no yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm yeah. conscious of it. Yeah. 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 And, and, and what about you, um, uh, Matthew? Matthew? <laughs> I've got, I'm talking to only Matthews, Michael's thing. <laughs> what about you, Matthew? What's your biggest fear about actually doing the race? Like, you know, when you're underway. Yeah. Look, I, I think it's the whole Southern Ocean scenario, isn't it, uh, on your own? And I, if you haven't done it before, which I haven't, I, I guess that's probably the, uh, you know, the the overriding sort of concern. And I, I think you just got to do everything you can to prepare yourself for being in that place. But uh, but I, I think that's probably the biggest fear, really. There's a whole list yeah. of other, uh, other concerns and, you know, coping with the solitude and uh, missing your family and all those things. But, yeah, yeah I, I think it's like Ian says, it's that, um, you know, you end up in a, a situation that you can't easily get out of. Yeah, yeah, too true. Um, and so, Ian, the um, the prospect of um, uh, you know what would you say having the, the the isolation of no real communication. I mean, you've got a sat phone, but you can only talk to me <laughs> with the sat phone. Um, you know, how are you going to cope with that? What do you think is the you know what's your tactics there? You know, you're looking forward to it, or you're wishing you know it was something different. No, it's all part of it for me. I mean, talking to you is going to be a bit of a headache every week. I did, I did wonder if we could do that. <laughs> with you know. <laughs> but, you know, it's it's absolutely part and parcel of what we're doing. And, yeah. you know, I'm going to miss everyone. Of course I am. But that's not the same as saying I'm going to be kind of lonely. So I don't know. I really don't know. But at the moment, I'm that's part of it for me. I, I, I don't want to... Or the sat phone almost gets in the way of that, arguably, right? And that's maybe too romantic, but, you know, uh, no, I, so it's all it. Yeah, you, you're right. I mean, we protect that really hard. You know, everyone says, oh, you got to allow live video off the boats. And, this and, that. and technology now is available to get live video off 36-foot boats, you know. But it'll lose so much from the race if we ever do, and we never will. You know, it, it, it is a case of... Um, you know, getting out there and being subjected to some uh, restrictions in communication and, and go to solitude, you know, that's, that's part of the deal. So, uh, Matthew, what's what's the what's the most fun thing you're looking for from the race? You know, the, the thing, you know, what's the, what's the thing you're looking for? Oh, it's going to be fantastic because. Look, I, I think one, I think getting to the start line for all of us will be a significant achievement you know, with all the prep and, and, and getting everything else in our lives to kind of line up. But, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, signing up for the race is probably the, the huge initial first step. I think I, th I think kind of after the start of the race, once you're a few weeks into it and you just get into that routine on the boat and, uh, and you know, hopefully you're happy with the way things are going, I think that might be, a you know, a good place to be. So. Yeah, so how competitive are you? What's, what's the deal? Where, where do you slot in? Because I always say there's three groups. There's the group that just want to get around and, and face it. Then there's the yeah. other ones that want to do that as well. They want to get around and face it, but they want to sail as fast as they can so they don't embarrass themselves. And then there's the ones that want to win. Where do you slot? When people ask me that question, Don, I say that I've got, you know, it's a descending list. The first is to come back alive. The second is to get the whole way around. Yeah. Because 
that in itself would be a, an a, enormous achievement, you know, to so single handed alone, non stop around the world. Uh, yeah. For any, for any one of us as entrants, uh, would be just such a, a great thing to achieve. And the third is to win the race. But uh, I do say it's in that order, but I, I'm a really competitive person and that's a race. So, uh, yeah. you know, I'm, uh, I, I want to set the boat up and myself up to, to do as well as I can, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, cool. I guess that comes back to the safe choice of buying a Rustler 36 that historically has clearly been a competitive boat in this race. Yeah, that was in 18, not necessarily in 22. Yeah. I mean, you, you, know, you know, I mean, who knows what will happen? <laughs> That's a joke. Don, one, you know. but, but, Don, one of the most interesting things for 2022 will be actually exactly that, won't it? You know, there's the, the Bob Perry designs that weren't in the last race uh, with their long uh, waterline length and uh, Ian's yeah, got his up and so we'll see, uh, we'll see how that goes this time around. So, uh, yeah. but no, it's going to be great. And I, was, I love you know, being a spectator for the last race. So, yeah. Yeah, that was one of the big disappointments when we, uh, in quick succession, lost RA and, and, and Tommy and, and uh, Gregor and, you know, like, because it was really was shaping up to be an incredible race. You know, Mark Slats was there, but he had, he had, but he, Tommy was bearing down on Mark Slats. He was going to sail right past him. And, and Gregor was holding his own as well. Gregor was closing in and it was boat for boat. They're all doing the similar things. It would have been fantastic. And, and losing RA was just like a, besides everything else, you know, we love RA. It was a total disaster because he was just knocking everyone out. You know, RA was flying, you know. And, so. Uh, and, Don, the other interesting one will be Mike Davies, you know, Cape Dory 36. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a hot boat. I've always said the Cape Dory. In fact, the Cape Dory and the and the um, uh, Saga 36, they're dark yeah. horses in my mind. The Saga 36 is cool. Too bad there's an Irishman running it. You know, that's a bit of, you know, anyway. Joke, joke. <laughs> so. Pat, uh, Pat describes that boat going at very high speeds. But, you know, when you when you watch uh, Pat's videos on uh, on Facebook of that boat sailing it, the Saga sails beautifully. Well, here's so. a guy that knows. Here's a guy that knows. At the end of the last race, uh, I was having a conversation somewhere with Mark Slats. I'm not sure where it was. And I said, oh, if you did it again, Mark, what did you do? And he says, oh, I don't know, you know, maybe Saga 36. <laughs> but he's still got his boat. I don't know what he'll do. He's, he's focusing on his rowing right now. In fact, that brings up something that I haven't mentioned. So everyone would have buggered off by now. But anyway, the anniversary of two years to the start, I know two years from the start of the 18 races on July the 1st. So we're going to con we'll send a message out to all the – previous entrance from 18 and we will see who wants to come on here and if we get eight or nine of the previous entrants that want to have a chat i'll get a three or four minute catch up hey what are you doing you know blah, 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 blah. we'll try and schedule it jane's gonna shuffle them around and so on so so we'll do next week's tuesday live with you uh, matthew okay and then on wednesday that's july the first we're going to see who pops up for a chat from the from the 18 race, you know, and, and we might have, because we can actually put four things on here. We can have four of us up at the same time. If I drop a photo in, that's what happens. Boom, boom. Um, I don't know what happens if we go more. I think we can have more. So we might have a whole bunch of 2018 guys up next Wednesday. So we'll, we'll watch out for that. Uh, anyway, that's all cool. So we're just about pushing time. So I'm going to um, I'm going to uh, get rid of you, Matthew, because I didn't want you to say too much and to talk about your emergency medicine uh adventures uh in the medical profession it'll be good to have a, a a medic in the race you might get a lot of well i hope you don't but anyway you might be have people with headaches or something you know <laughs> <laughs> okay matthew so good to chat thanks for coming on now we'll see you next week eh yeah see you next week thank you okay see you later bye-bye um, yeah so um so yeah he's got some good stories there i didn't want to say too much because otherwise nothing to talk about next week you know <laughs> so um, so okay, so what's your uh, what else would you like to say? Have you, there, there must be something that you'd like to say to people before we uh, wrap up. Well, you know, you didn't you didn't ask me what my uh, my secret weapon was going to be to beat Matthew, what's your right? Secret so, weapon? What's my secret weapon? Well, Isfan Isfan gave me my secret weapon because Isfan is obviously my mentor and my guru, right? So not only did he provide yeah. me with a boat, but he also provided me with a lifetime supply of well. Of wild mackerel, mackerel in cans. <laughs> Which I believe is a great sponsor of Isfan. So, uh, and Isfan was not going to run out of food. Uh, I've been eating. So, so since. you're going to have them. They'll be five years old by the time the race is up. Perfect. That's perfect. Yeah, perfect. That's yeah, perfect. Absolutely. In fact, I agree. I'm a, I 
<laughs> I've got tins of fish in the shelf here. You know, once it starts, you can never get over it. It's a, it's a good pucker, so that's okay. <laughs> that's all right. That's the secret weapon. Um, yeah, all right. So, um, all right, good to chat, eh? Um, good luck with everything, and we'll, um, we're will we around. We'll uh, be talking again, no doubt. We were just saying to Jane today, we were at seven. Uh, when we get to the end, we'll probably just loop around and maybe keep it shorter again, go the cycle, uh, and see what yeah, people yeah. have done because it takes six months to get there. But uh, uh, we'll see what happens with that. But, yeah, it'll be fun if we get some entrance from last year's event. I mean, the 2018 GPR. So, yeah. um, all good. Okay. Tapio on and everything. So that'd be great. Fantastic, Don. Yeah, really good. No, well, Tapio's got a listing for here for the next one. So, because he's in 2022, 20, of course, you know. Tapio actually launched his boat. He's a classic, eh? He launched the the Swan 55 for the Ocean Globe race and uh, took everyone out. You know, he's got kids on board again doing the whole thing. And he's got one of his crew does great videos, right? One of his crew is filming everything and doing all this stuff to music. He just did another classic uh, on his Ocean Globe race boat. So he's he's quite yeah. hectic. He's running two boats, lots of people. I hope lots of – well, I know he's got a lot of people helping him, but he's still got a hundred sponsors. So uh, amazing guy. Okay, that's about it. Um, so good to chat in, and we'll um, we'll see you again soon, eh? Yeah, see me soon. See everyone on Facebook. Okay, safe sailing. I hope you get out there, eh? It must be very frustrating. Yeah, cross so, uh, yeah. end of end of July. End of July, yeah. end of July okay. we're on the water, guaranteed. Sounds good. I hope to be sailing in September, but that's another story. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll see you later. Yep. Okay. Bye bye. See ya. So that's the end of another session, number seven. So we'll see you next week, same time, same place, and. Uh, Ah, oh, that's who I forgot. I keep forgetting about Shane. Shane's just – well, he, he he mustn't be watching. Shane's not watching. That's why I forgot him. So, yeah, we've got another Australian entry. So we chocker with Australian entry. So, Shane, sorry I forgot you there. How could I forget you? Cheapest. Never mind. Okay. So we'll uh, see you next week. Bye-bye.